I just want you guys to know that when I applied to Yale four years ago, I literally Googled the question, why Yale? In those days, one of the first things that popped up was the residential college system. I was like, sweet, done. Talked about attending a boarding school and how my dorm life shaped me into the person I am, which is why I found the residential college system so appealing. This brings us to the first answer, the safe answer, which is obviously the residential college system. It would be super nice for you guys to talk about them, especially because they just built two brand spanking new colleges, Benjamin Franklin and Polly Murray College on Science Hill. By the way, guys, every res college is decked out. I'm talking about the facilities are amazing. Every single college has its own gym, dining hall, library, buttery, which is where we go to get some late night grub. And some of them even have special facilities like dance studios, ceramic studios, recording studios, basketball courts, and you know, Silliman even has its own little movie theater where people used to watch Game of Thrones together. More importantly though, each residential college has its own proud traditions. For instance, I was in Ezra Stiles College. As you can see, our mascot is the moose. Our slogan is go F-bomb moose. Our main tradition was medieval night, which is when Stylesians would dress up in armor, don swords and shields, and we would go and pillage, plunder neighboring dorms, leaving behind nothing but a river of blood, guts, and violence in our wrathful path. If I were you guys though, I'd write about the social architecture of these dorms and how they cultivate a sense of effortless community. Do some independent research, then explain why this residential college system matters so much to you personally. And you can link it back to some of the communities you've been a part of in the past. By the way guys, if you could consider saucing this video a like, that would be greatly appreciated. I will be donating a dime for every like that this video gets. And please consider subscribing to my channel where I will be covering college admissions tips as well as general life advice. Thanks so much. Reason number two is Yale's chic culture. Chic is actually an acronym that I invented yesterday. The CH stands for chill, the I for inclusive, and the last C stands for collaborative. Let's start with chill. I think that Yale is actually both academically and socially very chill. It's definitely not as difficult academically as some of the other more rigorous schools like U Chicago, Princeton. And I'm just speaking from my friends' experiences since I went to a boarding high school, a lot of those kids ended up going to top colleges and so we kept in touch. Yale does not have a bell curve. In fact, we have grade inflation. Average grade is a B. And I have seen people argue with their professors and TAs just to get a higher grade. So it happens. I wouldn't say that the academics are insanely like mind-bendingly challenging, but they can be if you decide to double major or you decide to pursue STEM, which is traditionally more difficult. The socially chill part of Yale actually connects to the inclusive part. Yeah. So I remember hearing a story during my first year where at UPenn, going out to a party could cost you a hundred bucks because you have to Uber, party locations are off campus. And then at these frat parties, my friend told me, you had to, if you were a guy, you had to show up with two girls and basically like offer one of them up. So the ratio would be like two to one, which I just thought was really, really messed up. That is not the case at Yale. Pretty much all the frat parties are open, especially in the beginning of the year. They, they really want freshmen and, and new students to come enjoy the atmosphere. All the alcohol is free. Maybe later when there's like more formal events and you know, you have date nights and you want to invite specific people, those tend to be a little bit more exclusive, but that makes sense. I'm not even going to talk about the, the frats that much. There's so many other parties, whether that's because an acapella group is hosting a party or a major extracurricular club is doing one. It's very easy to attend and it's just not like no one's going to turn you away at the door. The only time I can think of is like, I remember Sega throwing big parties and they would literally have to turn people away because the building was so crowded, it was a fire hazard. <laughs> so I have always found Yale's party culture to be super duper fun. You know, people end up just hopping to three or four parties during a weekend, especially during that first year. There's so many opportunities to hang out, make friends. Um, and of course, if you don't wanna drink and rage, there's plenty of people just like you. I remember walking into, you know, Styles, the buttery, late at night on a Saturday, and people were just playing Catan with each other and just hanging out, having a chill time. 
I love that. I really, really enjoyed that Yale had such a wide scope. Like if you want to grind, get a 4.0 and go to medical school, there's plenty of people just like you and they'll help you out with your problem sets. And if you want to rage five nights a week, go ham, darty, which is short for a day party, there's also tons of people just like you and you can find your group. Damn, I love you. <laughs> okay, so how would I answer this question? Well, I would call a Yale student or Yale alum who is maybe one or two degrees removed from you and then I would just, you know, drop that Yale has this chic culture, very chill, inclusive, collaborative culture. I was wondering if you, my Yale student alum friend, could tell me a quick story about one of your experiences. Then I would leverage that anecdote and put it in your Why Yale response. That personal experience really speaks to the admissions committee and it shows that you've actually spoken to a Yale student, which immediately sets you away from the pack. The added bonus of using one of these anecdotes is now you can cite specific memories, places, traditions on campus. The admissions committees love that stuff. And of course, this is a tactic that you can apply to any school, not just Yale, but you know, lesser schools like Harvard and Princeton. Reason number three. Guys, I've saved the best for last. Reason number three is secret societies. Yes, that's right, people. Skull and bones, scroll and key, manuscript, links to the CIA. Let me give you guys a quick rundown. These days, secret societies are no longer the affluent white male elitist groups that they used to be. In fact, Skull and Bones, which President Bush and Secretaries of State John Kerry were both famously a part of, had no white people this year. It was all POC, which I think is really cool. About damn time, it's 2020 people. So there's three kinds of societies at Yale, bio societies, party societies, and debate societies. They're exactly what they sound like, except the bio society is short for autobiography. That's the society that I was a part of. And basically there are, there were 16 members. I think most of them have 16 people, eight guys, eight girls. Well, some of them are unisex, but most of them are uh, co-ed. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we would go around every week and one person would share their entire life story. That would usually take three to four or five hours and everyone would go over the course of a year. So we met every single night, every single Thursday and Sunday night, excuse me. And one night would be dedicated to bios and another night would basically be fiesta. Now, some of you guys might be wondering which part of the secret society is actually secret? That's a good question. And actually everyone knows who is a part of what society, it's pretty open and people know the location of the secret society's tomb, which is where people meet. The one thing that people don't talk about is what happens inside of the tomb or the, the life stories, right? The bios that people share, we don't talk about that. That is sacred. And also we usually don't allow guests inside of the house unless there's a special circumstance as well. So yeah, that's the secret part. I will not share my fellow grave diggers life stories, no matter how many times you guys smash that like button. No, I won't do it. My lips are zipped. If I were answering the why Yale question in 2020, I might talk about how the secret societies at Yale are really just an extension of Yale's inclusive and caring culture. I don't even think the admissions committee knows this, but basically each year the seniors have a Google spreadsheet where they can track the juniors and they wanna make sure that everyone who wants to be a part of society gets to be in one. That's kind of the sentiment. You don't want 10 societies going for one person, right? That one person can only pick one other society. And so they kind of, there's a, there's a balancing system where I think that if you want to be a part of, you know, this kind of group, there is an opportunity. And I would say that like maybe 40% of seniors are in a secret society. So it is kind of a, a big thing at Yale. Guys, Yale is awesome. If you're on the fence and thinking about applying, just do it, just apply. Toss your application in. I almost didn't apply to Yale. Princeton was my number one school for years. Like I was like Princeton, Princeton, Princeton. Their mascot is a tiger. My Chinese Zodiac animal is a tiger. This is destiny. And yet 
I fell in love with Yale's culture and the chill vibes, especially during revisit day. I think that single day completely changed my mind. And after working so hard and grinding during my high school years, I realized that I wanted to be somewhere where I would be happy and somewhere that I would thrive academically and socially and just be able to graduate with friends that I would be happy to invite to my wedding. That was really my goal going into Yale. People are genuinely looking out for each other. Within weeks of these acquaintances that I had met, they would text me and be like, how are you? Are you okay? Are you feeling well? Yale is truly the perfect blend of intelligence, goodness, and work ethic. You would be a fool not to toss an application in. Speaking of which, if you guys want to talk about Yale or college admissions in general, I will be available for free 20-minute coffee chats at the following link, bit.ly slash botheredkevin20. This offer is valid up until the point where I reach 1,000 subs. I'm happy to help with essays, interviews, college admissions tips, whatever you guys want. Finally, I know that some of you may have recently been deferred or rejected from your favorite school. Not much we can do about the past, but we can focus on the present. So just know that I'm constantly rooting for you guys and your success is my success, all right? Keep up the great work. Peace.